What's up, everyone? My name is Jesse, and this is the auditorium. I react to video game music for the first time, and today is a kind of rare game on the channel, but I'm always happy to see it. It's Command and Conquer. This is CNC Red Alert. We're going to be hearing two songs, but three different videos. So this is from composer Frank Klopaki. First song is going to, is going to be Trenches the remastered version we will not be hearing the original but we will be hearing the original of bigfoot and also the remaster of bigfoot so if you're wondering why i'm not hearing the original trenches because it wasn't requested but also then this video would be extremely extremely long so maybe one day i'll check it out so we're starting with trenches and uh then bigfoot the only thing i know and this is from the channel frank klopaki the only thing i know about uh CNC is, uh, what is it? Uh, RTS, I think, is the genre. But it's like this sort of heavy, heavy rock, dad rock kind of cool stuff. A lot of, a lot of chugging, a lot of guitars, and uh, but also some electronic stuff that has surprised me before. These are requested by Darton on Patreon. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. Trenches from CNC Red Alert. Oh. In the meantime, I'm gonna look up what Red Alert is, if it's like a sequel or something. I don't know the order of releases. This is, ooh, this is cool already. This is like a movie. 1996 Westwood Studios. All right, I'll read that later. This is the f second time I've heard like a big deviation from Command and Conquer's music. intro to a movie like you're seeing all the like the names starring blah 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 this is reminding me of something but I don't know what Very like build kind of the build up. Ambient, but also kinda like it feels very like preparation or something. I thought it would've like take off by now. It's pretty 
pretty like stagnant though. It, it seems like it's just floating here in this energy. Oh man. That's him too, right? Like he's, he's everything. I'm pretty sure he's a guitarist. Ooh, I like this. This is interesting. This is a very less is more thing here. I'll explain later. I need to find out more about Frank Klepacki. All I know for sure is that every time I upload anything from him, he's got like a cult following similar to like the Fallen Brothers. Like, he's highly praised. I don't know what else he's done besides Red, uh, Command and Conquer though. I guess I could look that up too. Okay, we're winding down here. Got my Wikipedia going here, but uh, I want to talk about other stuff really quick. Oh, uh, the snare. Like military snare. Dude, this is cool. Damn. You know what this feels like to me? I think the command, like from what I've heard from Command and Conquer, it gives me very action hero like feeling like the like us millennials maybe even some gen x you know they grew up with rambos and terminator and robocop and all that stuff right like just that kind of thing and i feel like this music kind of taps into that because they were kids at that time i mean of course anyone can enjoy this now but it just it just feels like it was from that sort of mindset of composing that this stemmed from. Also, I feel like this stuff, I don't know which came first, by the way, but I feel like, and this is just a shot in the dark, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like if you play Command & Conquer, you also gave Doom a try or vice versa. They sort of have this same kind of, I don't know what it is, aura, you know, like it's heavy, but it's, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure like they're both totally diff like completely different stories, different types of gameplay, first person shooter, right, all that. But I feel like what I'm saying is like the the, the fan of the video game, like someone who owns Command and Conquer, probably also owns Doom. But please let me know if I'm wrong because it just feels like something, um, you know, someone that was uh, that grew up in the '90s, early '80s would like. That's just an assumption. That's just one assumption. Because when I heard this, I heard, I saw like, I saw like Terminator 2 opening or the, or one. It sounded like more of like one, like the, kind of that darker, grittier thing. But this was like ambient done really cool. Ambient is sort of 50-50 with me because I think most of us would agree that the ambient stuff in music is 100% better in game because that's where it's supposed to be. It makes you wonder sometimes, though, because the stuff I've heard from certain composers, like Frank, I, I wonder if back, I don't know when, this, what was this, 96? Yeah. I wonder if back then, you know, the 96, the internet wasn't really a thing yet. Like, it was there, but it wasn't, you know, what it is now. You have to imagine, like, the thought process back then, like, well, I'm going to make this music for this game, and that's it. You know, I wonder how much they thought that it would be preserved in the future through a website called YouTube or something like that, right? Like, you can still hear it later on through digital streaming and all that. I feel like peop, composers like Frank and, um, or Frank Kaplaki and others that I can't think of right now, like the Fallens, and they thought of the music way ahead of time, like outside of the game, that it could be heard outside of the game too and it'd still be enjoyable. And maybe that's why they get such high high praise, you know what I mean? So, anyways, 
still don't know what a kind of RTS game is. I kind of have a feeling I know what it is. If I if I had to guess, I would say the closest thing I've experienced to an RTS, based on what I've heard, is I think the closest thing I have is like Fort Condor and FF7. <laughs> right? Like actual like, like placing stuff here to make sure the other side doesn't advance or something. But it, well, that's kind of like my basic premise of it is like you, you're placing stuff to strategize, uh, you know, your victory instead of just like constantly acting. It's just more like things are passively happening on a board or something like that. They sound fun. They don't really sound like something I would play myself. But it would be something that I would actually probably enjoy watching. You know, see how people think. Kind of like I like like uh, watching people play chess. I don't play chess, but I, you know, I like seeing people think. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Anyways, uh, I'm going to actually look up more into this because I, I, I want to see like which came first. If Red Alert was a sequel, or, uh, you know, like I want to see what was the first in the series. There's a lot of information here. Um, uh, the other thing I said was that this is kind of like a less is more type of thing. Right? It was just like this really ambient track that's just kind of building. Dun, 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 dun. But whenever the guitar came in, you know, they could have shredded, they could have done a riff, they could have done some melodies. All they did was just hit a couple of like really improvised, loose pinch harmonic notes. <laughs> to, I believe, emulate a sound of like an alarm. Whatever it was, it sounded perfect there because it sounded like it just was just raw. And I like that. <laughs> that was really, really cool. And just by the title and from the images I've seen, oh, it's EA, I didn't even know it was EA. Uh, it seems like it's obviously like war inspired. So anyways, let's continue to Oh, this one's also called Red Alert. Okay, so okay, so in my head, Red Alert I thought was like the remaster, but I guess Red Alert is also here. Anyways, let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing this is the original song, Bigfoot. And then after that, we're gonna hear the remastered Bigfoot. Oh, I just got an idea. Is is the left one the original cover art, and the right one is the new cover art? Cause that's kind of cool. I know nothing about this game. Anyways, let's hear uh, Bigfoot from what I imagine is the original game. I wonder if this has to do with the monster truck or the mon or the monster itself. So this is '96. I'm gonna have to do some more digging here. Yeah, see, this is what I mean by like, if you like Doom, you probably like this stuff too. Like, it's. Oh, there's a handful of Command and Conquer games. Holy crap. They've always been EA. Based on Doom 2? I've heard of Doom. It sounds like a it sounds like a lab or a bunker or something. It sounds kinda like a facility or something like that. I feel like computers are here or something. Whoa, there's so many. Okay. We'll read that later. That sounds like gunfire as drums. Whoa. Oh, that sounds so cool. I can already tell the remastered one is going to be like chunky. Command and Conquer sounds sick. It's 
like a perfect blend of electronic and heavy. But still, it sounds like very, like, movie-like. I could totally hear this in a movie. Action movie. Something like that. Or like a blade fight scene. Oh. Where are we going? Dynamics. Oh, are they turning that into a percussion? Ooh. Whoa, the percussion is building. Oh, dude. <laughs> Rad. <laughs> oh man! I need to hear more Command and Conquer. This is like my third time, or fourth, something like that. So, if I recall correctly, this is this is thinking music. You're doing quick actions while hearing this. Strategic actions. I'm gonna go straight into the remaster one after this. I'm gonna talk about both. Thumbs over. Okay, let's go straight into the remaster right now. I did figure they were going to go to electric guitars, but there's both. They still have the original synth in there. Let's just see what happens. And that is a lot of distortion on that guitar. Like pure gain. The Tiberian Suns. Trump set now. Yeah, now it's more of a like band feel. If I recall correctly, he plays live too, right? Or used to or something. So he probably got the idea to just make like an album of a live setting of the songs. Yeah, it's a real bass too, so it just sounds like a band playing, you know? The song sounds extremely military. Which I'm sure is the point. <laughs> I like how it's the same person. You can see like their lips match. The same person. I mean, they're both cool. So at the top of this, that's celebrating 25 years. Been around. Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different feel now, but 
the soul is still there. Base has like a little bit of distortion too. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that was tight. That was cool. Brought something new to the table. Who was that? Damn, that was cool. That was good. All right, here we go. Here's the bridge. Let's see how they're gonna bring back the percussion again. <laughs> Let's go, Frank. The bass is going from left to right. is also going left to right. I wonder if he's gonna bust out like full on solo or just do leads. First of all, first things first, that was not a matter of which was better. That was just cool that we get two different versions of it and they can live alongside each other. Those are both really cool. Uh, a couple things I want to go over, see if I can remember them all. First of all, I, I have the timeline here of the games. There's a lot. It goes from 1995 up until 2020, starting with just Command and Conquer. Mind you, I have no idea if I've just heard Command and Conquer by itself. Then it went to the Covered Operations, Red Alert, and then Red Alert, Red Alert. They've kind of like seemed to have changed their... I don't know, like, it's is this like a series or like an umbrella of games? For example, like in 2002, there's something just called Renegade. But I don't know if it says like, if it's like Command and Conquer Renegade or just Renegade. Oh no, it says Command and Conquer Renegade. Okay, never mind. I'm looking at the Wikipedia, by the way. So I'm not sure when these remastered ones were. Unless it's this latest one I'm seeing in 2020 where it says Remastered Collection. Anyways, there's a lot of games. So first things, uh, well, second things second. I want to ask this to the people that are watching this that 
have played the series pretty much since inception. I want to know how was your experience like playing the first one, hearing the first one, experiencing that, and then hearing these later, like growing up with it. That seems really exciting and kind of rare. That's not like a common thing you can just do that many people probably don't get to share that experience. So if, if you're one of them, please like share how, um, well, you don't have to grow up particularly. Like I would like to hear from them, but also I would like to hear from, if you just played both, you could played them recently both and just experienced them that way. But I think it's pretty special to not only have the same composer, but just the, the history there, you know? It's, yeah, there's a lot of game series that last for a while and have followings and stuff, your Marios, your Sonics. But then there's a lot of other games that don't sell millions and millions like that, but also have withstood the test of time. I, I consider 2020 pretty damn recent. Like that's still stuff being made. Maybe there's something new down the pipeline. Like if it ended in like, I don't know, 2000 or something, then I could say it's like pretty much dead. But who knows, you know, maybe it's still a thing. So that's cool. And again, like I mentioned, the same composer coming back. That's something that really was making me think a lot as I was hearing these songs. Because I've been making music, right, 20 years, just about. And, well, longer, but whatever, for a while. And it makes me think, how would I approach, or how would you, like, try to put yourself in that position of you making something, and then years later redoing it? You know, how faithful are you going to stay to it? Have you heard it so many times that you just are bored of it? You know, obviously it would be an honor to come back and do it because there's there's probably a good chance this is just an assumption that back then when these were being made he probably thought it was just like a weekend gig he got hired for a little job and never thought it would be anything that's a, that's a very could just very well be a possibility not that it wasn't epic or historic or anything like that you know what i mean but he was just probably just trying to get paid got hired something like that you know so to come back, I think about all those things when it comes to these. And there's not a lot of instances where that can happen. And I guess I could talk about the song now. The Let's talk about the second one. I just heard that one. The second one obviously was more band-oriented, real guitars, real bass, drum set. And they still kept the synth pulsating in there, but it was mostly like a... It felt like the essence of one of their live shows type of thing. I don't know how often they do that. I just know someone sent me a link once of Frank and uh, some band. I don't know if it's his band, but they were playing some Command and Conquer music. So this one had a very lively feel and, you know, it's definitely modern. They changed it up, though. You know, they did some new things. It was more focused on the electric guitar this time and the bass and less percussive stuff was really cool obviously they had a little more of expressive guitar solo the bass was probably the highlight of the second one because it was just a, a bass solo you don't really hear that too often really nice but the first one the original song man that holds up that was cool had this constant pulsating feel of just something's coming near and it's very tense it's a very tense song but on top of that, I really, I really like what they did with the percussion in that one. It sounded, you know what this sounded like to me? It sounded like Frank Klopacki took the idea of the source material and just went all out with it. Oh, it's a game about war or military or something like that, whatever. Okay, watch what I can do. And he, it sounded like he turned artillery and weapons into percussion, right? When, when the bridge came in and it was just coming back up, it sounded to me like missiles being loaded, like, and then it just kept building up. And then it sounded like um, like a bullet sash, like being prepared. And then, you know, it just sounded like weaponry being ready. And that was so cool. And that, and that was the percussion, building and building. And it sounded like an army was growing. It was cool. Like, I really thought that was 
pretty genius. And uh, that was not in the second one, but I mean, it's cool. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, I don't know. I think Command and Conquer just needs to be on the channel more. <laughs> I don't hear it all that often. And the stuff I have heard, it's just, I can, I can just feel the, the passion behind it. Yeah, that's really all I got. I don't know much about Frank, though. I, I, all I know, I mean, I guess I could just look it up. But all I know is Command and Conquer. You know what I mean? Let me see. Let me just do a quick, the quickest of search. Like, is he... Was he a musician first? And then... You know what I mean? Let's see. Let's see. Damn, he looks like a badass. He's from the US. Let's do a... He's the audio director of Petroglyph Games. Seems like a seems like the life of the party or something. Okay. Okay, so he's done some music. Dune too. Oh, game we were talking about earlier. So Dune. He's done some Dungeons and Dragons. Anything I rec I'm seeing if I recognize anything. Okay, basically he seems to be like Westwood Studios, like he was the, the house musician. Because everything, all these games look like Westwood Studios. Yeah. And then once Command & Conquer started in, five, in 95, it just, just kept going and going and going to Command & Conquer. Blade Runner, Dune. I don't recognize anything else though. Star Wars? Okay, and then it's just been nothing but Petroglyph games after that. I wonder if uh, West would turn into Petroglyph or if that's just his own thing. Okay, so he's pretty much stayed within a realm of like, f let's say five to 10 games and just kept making stuff. Anyways, that's really cool. Uh, let me know more about whatever you want about Frank or his band or Command and Conquer or all the games. What is Bigfoot? <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot what the titles it was even referring to, but that was cool. That was really cool. So thank you, Darton. And hopefully we get to hear more soon. Thank you to all my patrons you see here. I couldn't be here without them. Thanks to you for watching. My name is Jesse in the auditorium later.